Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will learn about the op-amp slew rate. So the slew rate of the op-amp can be defined as the maximum rate at which the output of the op-amp can change. Or in another way, we can say that how fast the op-amp is able to respond. So let us understand about this slew rate by taking one example. So let us say we have one op-amp which is configured as a unity follower. That means the output of the op-amp will follow the input signal. And let us assume that at the input side we have applied the square wave. So this square wave is varying from 0 to 5 volt. So at the output side also we should get a square wave pulse which is varying from 0 to 5 volt. Now here ideally the output should go from 0 to 5 volt in a no time. But actually if you see the output will take some time to reach from 0 to 5 volt. And if you see the waveform then actual waveform will look like this. So the time which is being taken by the op-amp to reach to this 5 volt depends upon the slew rate of the op-amp. So the unit of this slew rate is volt per microsecond. So let us say for one particular op-amp if slew rate is 1 volt per microsecond it means that the output will change by 1 volt in a 1 microsecond. And for that op-amp to reach from 0 to 5 volt it will take around 5 microsecond of time. Now here the different op-amp has a different value of slew rate and the value of slew rate varies from 0.1 volt per microsecond up to 1000 volt per microsecond. So here is the list of few op-amps and corresponding slew rate. So as you can see for the general purpose 741 series op-amp the value of slew rate is 0.5 volt per microsecond while for the op-amp from the linear technology the slew rate can be as fast as 1000 volt per microsecond. So depending upon your application you need to select a op-amp with a specific slew rate so that your output will not get distorted. And very shortly we will see how the slew rate can affect your output signal and how we can avoid that. But before we understand that let us quickly see why every op-amp has a finite amount of slew rate and why every op-amp is not able to respond very quickly. So the reason for this slew rate is the internal compensation capacitor of the op-amp and we have already talked about it in the last video. So we had seen that this compensation capacitor is used to enhance the stability of the op-amp at high frequencies. So this capacitor is the intermediate stage of the op-amp and the voltage that is developed across this capacitor is amplified at the final stage. So the slew rate of the op-amp depends upon the how fast this capacitor charges or discharges. So we already know that the capacitor current IC can be given by the expression C times dVc by dt. So we can say that the rate of change of voltage will be equal to the charging current IC divided by the capacitance of this capacitor. So let us say for given op-amp if the charging current is 200 microampere and the value of this compensation capacitor is 30 picofarad in that case the slew rate will be equal to 6.66 megavolt divided by second or we can say that it is equal to 6.66 volt per microsecond. So in this way the slew rate of the op-amp depends upon this charging and discharging of this internal compensation capacitor. Now for the most of the op-amps the value of this slew rate is identical for the positive as well as the negative voltage swing. That means whether your output is going from negative to the positive or positive to the negative, the value of slew rate is identical in both direction. So now that is being said, now let us see how this slew rate can affect your output signal. So first of all, let us see the effect of slew rate on the square wave pulse. So here assume that the output of an op-amp is a square wave pulse which is varying from 0 to 5 volt and the time period of this square wave pulse is a 40 microsecond and the on time of the square wave is a 20 microsecond. So in ideal case the output of this op-amp should go from 0 to 5 volt in a no time. But because of this slew rate let us see how the output will be get affected. So here assume that the slew rate of the op-amp is 0.5 volt per microsecond. And for our understanding let us only take this first pulse. So here we are considering only single pulse and in ideal condition the response of the op-amp should look like this. But here we know that in actual condition the slew rate of the op-amp is 0.5 volt per microsecond. 
So this op-amp can change the output voltage only by a 0.5 volt in a 1 microsecond. So it will take around 10 microsecond to reach to the 5 volt. So actually if you see it will take 10 microsecond to reach to the 5 volt and then after it will remain flat up to the 20 microsecond and then after again it will take 10 microsecond to reach to the 0 volt. So in this way because of this slow rate your output waveform will be get distorted. Now here the distortion of the output signal depends upon the input signal frequency as well as the amplitude of the output voltage. So now let us understand how the frequency and the amplitude will affect your output signal. So now instead of this 40 microsecond time period, let us say our new input signal has a 20 microsecond of time period or we can say that the on time of that signal is 10 microsecond and let us find the response of the op -amp for this particular condition. So now if you see it will take 10 microsecond to reach up to the 5 volt because here the slew rate of the op -amp is 0.5 volt per microsecond and then after it will again take a 10 microsecond to reach from 5 volt to the 0 volt. So in this way your output waveform will look like a triangular wave. Similarly, let us see how the amplitude of the signal will also affect your output. So now here instead of 0 to 5 volt, now the new signal is going from 0 to 10 volt and the on time of the square wave pulse is 10 microsecond. Now here the slew rate of the op -amp is 0.5 volt per microsecond. So in a 10 microsecond it can reach up to the 5 volt. So if you see here in a 10 microsecond the output will reach to the 5 volt. And then after again it will go from 5 volt to the 0 volt in a 10 microsecond. So as you can see here because of this slow slew rate the output of the op -amp is not even able to reach this 10 volt. So based on your input frequency and the amplitude you should decide the op -amp with a specific slew rate so that your output will have a minimum amount of distortion. So in this case suppose if we choose the op -amp, which is having a slew rate of let's say 20 volt per microsecond in that case if you see the response then the response will look like this because now the op -amp is able to reach this 10 volt in only 0.5 microsecond. So in this way if we use this op -amp, then the distortion in the output will be minimum. So based on your application you should decide a op -amp with a specific slew rate. So now this slew rate not only affects the square wave pulses but it can also affect the sine waves. So now let us see the effect of this slew rate on the sinusoidal signals. So in case of the sine waves also your output signal will be get distorted if the signal is changing faster than the slew rate of the op -amp. So let us say we have one sine wave which can be expressed by the expression V of t that is equal to Vm sine omega t. So now the rate of change of signal that is equal to dv by dt will be equal to vm multiplied by the omega into cos of omega t. So here the rate of change of signal will be maximum when the value of this cos omega t is 1. So the maximum rate of change of signal will be equal to the vm multiplied by the 2 pi times this frequency f. So the value of slew rate for the op -amp should be at least equal to this maximum rate at which the sine wave is changing. So we can say that the slew rate should be greater than or equal to this Vm multiplied by the 2 pi times this frequency f. So whenever the slew rate is greater than this value in that case it is ensured that you will not see any distortion in the output. So let us take the worst case that is slew rate that is equal to this maximum rate of change of sine wave. So from this we can find the maximum frequency for which you will not find any kind of distortion and that can be given by the expression slew rate divided by the 2 pi times this peak voltage of this sine wave. So up to this frequency you will not see any kind of distortion in the output and this frequency sometimes also known as the power bandwidth of the op -amp. Now here do not get confused with the unity gain bandwidth of the op -amp because this unity gain bandwidth is defined for the small signals which is in the range of millivolts while this power bandwidth is defined for the large signals which is in the range of volts. So for the small signals whenever your input signal frequency is greater than this unity gain frequency in that case you will see the attenuation in the output while in case of this large signals whenever your input signal frequency is greater than this maximum frequency in that case you will see the distortion in the output. So whenever 
this condition is not satisfied in that case you will see the distortion in the output so this is the case when your slew rate is less than the maximum rate at which your signal is changing so now based on this concept let us take some examples based on this slew rate so in the first example we need to select the op amp such that it is able to reproduce the 20 kilohertz of sinusoidal signal which is having a peak voltage of 10 volt so we need to find the minimum acceptable slew rate for this op amp so here the frequency of this sine wave which is given is 20 kilohertz now we know that for the sine wave the minimum slew rate that is required can be given by the expression vm multiplied by the 2 pi times this frequency f so here if we put all these values then we will get the value of this slew rate as 1.257 megavolt per second or we can say that that is equal to 1.257 volt per microsecond so to avoid the distortion the slew rate of the op amp should be greater than this value so for this application we cannot use the general purpose 74 op amp because it is having a slew rate of 0.5 volt per microsecond but instead of it suppose if we use this op amp which is having a slew rate of 15 volt per microsecond then we will not face any kind of distortion so now let us see the second example so in this example we have been given this unity follower circuit and to the circuit we are applying the square wave as a input now here the input signal is varying from 0 to 10 volt and it is having a duty cycle of 50 percent and also assume that this input signal is tunable that means it can be tuned from 1 kilohertz up to the 1 megahertz now apart from that we have been given that the slew rate of the op amp is 2 volt per microsecond so for this configuration we need to find the frequency of the square wave pulse where the output will be triangular wave with a peak voltage of 4 volt so here we need to find the frequency of the square wave pulse so that your output will be triangular wave which is having a maximum amplitude of 4 volt and here the slew rate of the op amp is 2 volt per microsecond that means the op amp will reach this 4 volt in a 2 microsecond so we can say that this time will be equal to 2 microsecond and the same time will be required to reach from 4 volt to the 0 volt that means the entire time period will be equal to 4 microsecond so from this we can say that the time period of the square wave pulse should be equal to 4 microsecond or in frequency it will be equal to 250 kilohertz so in this way whenever we apply the square wave pulse of 250 kilohertz then at the output you will get a triangular wave which is having a peak amplitude of 4 volt now suppose in the same example if you want the triangular wave with a 10 volt of output voltage in that case this time will be equal to 5 microsecond because from this slew rate this op amp will require a 5 microsecond to reach up to the 10 volt and the entire time period t1 will be equal to 10 microsecond so in frequency it will be equal to 100 kilohertz so as you can see as the input frequency will increase then your output will be get more and more distorted so for the particular application you need to select op amp in such a way that your output will have a minimum amount of distortion so this is all about the slew rate of the op amp so i hope in this video you understood about the slew rate of the op amp and how we can avoid the distortion in the output because of this slew rate so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos